Welcome to the Island of Fire. Today we're on Cummigan Island, a place slightly off the beaten track that has tons of things to do. From the famous white beach we're on now, and guys, it's stunning, to waterfalls, hot springs, this place is epic. So make sure you hit the subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and let's jump in to the video. All right, good morning, guys. We have just spent the last five days exploring Bohol and had such a lovely time, but it's now time to leave. We're heading to Kamikuan Island, which is a very remote island. I don't think many backpackers go there. I think Filipinos go there on holiday, but it's quite difficult to get to. It's going to entail a full day of travel, which we are starting right now at half seven in the lobby of our reception. So I thought I'd take you on the journey, see how difficult it really is, and then we'll get there and do some epic sightseeing. So step one, tricycle from Pang Lao to the bus terminal on the main island. Where do we buy tickets from? Uh, let's ask. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh that's cool. <laughs> that one there, yeah. So apparently we could just pay on the bus. Easy. And it's not full at all. And the one thing about the Philippines is you've got to give lots and lots of time. Oh, thank you. You've got to give lots and lots of time to a journey because they won't leave until the bus is full. <laughs> so you've got to give like hours. Thank you. You've got to give hours in case you're waiting for hours. I've got your small rucksack, yeah. This one? This one. Ah, this one. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. We just go on with our bags. Yeah, I must have. Okay. To. You take mine. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, are you okay? Ah, uh, no, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So there was. There was an aircon option, but obviously the buses here leave when they're full, don't they? Yeah. And this one's a lot fuller, so no aircon, we just want to get to the port. It looks like we're setting off. We literally waited two minutes, so that was look very lucky of it. The conductor came round, gave us these jazzy tickets with hole punches in them. It looks like a bloody bingo card. Yeah, but we, we still haven't paid yet, so we have no idea how much it's going to cost. But the windows are down, the doors open, and people are choosing to stand in there aisle rather than sit down. I'm not sure what the reason for that is. Maybe because they're getting off soon. Maybe they're just hopping on, hopping off, yeah. Yeah. So you pay at the end. It was 300 pesos for that journey and it did take two hours. If you want to get off and it's not the last stop, you whistle and then they pull over. And then if you want to get on the bus and say you're on the side of the road, you just put your arm out and it stops. So the bus literally stopped, I say, once every two minutes. So it's a long journey only because of the stops on it. But because you're a tourist, people generally just look after you. So the guy just told us when to go off and helped us with our bag. So it's, it's pretty stress-free, even though it sounds stressful. We need a ticket. Oh yeah, come, come again, come again, yeah. Thank you. Oh, it's hot. Where do we come through? Yeah? Hello. 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 Two tickets? Yes, please. Yeah, one sec. Two tickets, 1,532 pesos. And the ticketing office is right next to the port. The, the ship is leaving at 2.30. At 2.30? Yeah, 2.30. Ah. The boarding time is 2 p.m. Oh, I thought it was 1 p.m. <laughs> no, the, the schedule was changed. Oh, oh we're too early. Yeah. We're, we're, too here early. For, we're here for hours. Bags, bags okay on there, yeah. uh, yes, you can, you can check in your bags inside, then yeah. you can go outside if you want to. So, that is so funny. It is 10.30. The boat doesn't leave till 2.30, but it says it all because there's no articles online telling you any update information here, so just have to wing it. We're going to check our bags in early and then there's a McDonald's around the corner, so you just have to expect the unexpected on travel days, but it's not the end of the world, is it? We'll just find somewhere cool to sit and do some work probably. And there's also a 15 pesos terminal fee as you come in again, so two fees you have to pay on your way in. Lunch is served.
totally forgot to vlog us getting on the boat, but we've just got on the boat and everything is beds. Like, everywhere's beds. Top floor, sorry. I just checked to see if there's seats, beds. This is the middle floor. Beds. And then, here's Cass. Beds. There's beds everywhere. Is, but the ones upstairs, there's more of a breeze. Then I guess when it gets going, there's going to be... I don't know if I can be asked to lug the bags up further. But it, honestly, it's, fr it's, so it's three floors of beds. Well, we can, we can literally just sit on these, can't we? I've never, I've never experienced something like this before. It's very, it's very odd. Oh, there's a decking. Oh, this is where I'm going to be. Yes, Here we go. Oh, that's that's nice. I can just I'll just I'll just sunbathe. Yeah, we'll just leave. Yeah, I'll just put my backpack in there and then sit out here for a bit. I think. I'll put your backpack on then. Lovely, but strange. And this is the other one. We've chosen our uh, bed for the night for the day. Hopefully not for the night. Half two o'clock, half two now it is. Half two now it is. It's half two now, and we're meant to be on this for four hours, so. Apparently it's, apparently we can see the island, so it's either, there's two options. The first option is that's not the island, or the second option is. Someone's paddling us there. Is I could swim faster. <laughs> that's the second option. <laughs> so random, isn't it? There's the yeah. island there. Apparently that's it. Was there a restaurant up there, a cafe? There was a cafe up there, yeah. They want a coffee, wasn't that a bit? Yeah, yeah. It's the biggest, the biggest boat ever, isn't it? For like, yeah. for like. You can lie on the bed outside. No, no, the, the ones upstairs are outside, and it's, it's got like a breeze. Is it in the shade? Go and have a look yourself. You, you go and assess, and we'll decide after. Okay, we're off. This is the current setup. We've sat in the shade on the deck. It's very windy, so I don't know if you'll be able to hear us, but yeah, well, hopefully it'll be a smooth four hours. We'll see you on the other side. The journey was everything I love about the travel of traveling. We floated on this boat for four hours, oh my God. spotted three schools of dolphins. There. Yeah. Ah, dolphins. Ah. Watch flying fish skim over the water. <laughs> and listen to music. It felt so peaceful and beautiful. To top it off, we watched Camiguan Island light up orange as the sun set, and then when it was dark, lightning flashed in the distance. It felt like the island was entertaining us as we approached. Okay, so first stop on today's adventure is White Island. So we've just pulled up opposite it, and we're about to What's it called? And we're about to charter ourselves a boat over there, so wish us luck. Charter. Yeah, that's what you say, isn't it? You say, charter in a boat. You're becoming a bloody jack person now. Ahoy. There's actually an official ticket office around the corner here, so we thought we were just going to have to like haggle our way down with all the boat owners, but actually, it's pretty official. Oh, yes, please. So it's 550 for the boat and then 50 pesos per person to for the environmental fee. So 650 in total to get across. And you can see it right in the distance there. It would be cheaper if you came with like a group of friends because I think up to six people can get on the boat. You're not all right. <laughs> Man down. So I couldn't even fathom a guess how long this is going to take but it, it, you can see it right in the distance and you have to kind of time your trip to it well because if it's high tide then the sandbar is underwater so we've come first thing in the morning, top tip. Thank you. Thank you. 
See you later. See you later. Right, we're finally here on the famous White Island and my gosh, it is stunning as you pull up to it. We were thinking, have we picked the wrong tide? But as you get onto the island, it's, it definitely stretches out more. So yeah, it's beautiful. But the first thing I've noticed is how soft the sand is. Took my Crocs off, literally powdery white soft sand like unbelievable but not an inch of shade guys so i wouldn't say you could spend all day here unless you're uh, gonna want to fry like a lobster but yeah we're gonna have a wander around and check out its beauty literally goes from white to dark. I don't know whether that's a drop off or coral, but it's kind of spooky at the same time. So here we are, Camagain Island there. This side of the island of White Island, really wavy. And this side is so still, it's literally really cool. So that looks like a pool, so I might go in that water. Turquoise waters to the absolute maximum here mental i can get signal in here but not in our hotel <laughs> <laughs> this bit is like a warm bath no waves super calm the right shallowness to just sit back put your feet up oh. <laughs> Oh, she's got a weird tail and everything. So it's 50 pesos per person, which is very reasonable. The usual, isn't it? Yeah. Only one name, yeah. All right, next stop is Ardent Hot Springs. Now, Camagan Island is actually a volcanic island, has seven- Hence the island of fire. Oh, and actually has seven volcanoes, one of which is thought to still be active. Apparently it- You didn't tell me that when you bloody told me you wanted to come here. Yeah, we could have climbed it as well, but it's like a proper hike and we're not in the mood for that today. But yeah, it erupted in 1951, I think, and killed 3,000 people. So that's pretty horrendous, but- if, if Abby got those facts wrong, please feel free to shame her in the comments. Oh, yeah. And let us know what actually happened. I'd say it's pretty eerie in here, right? Because there's literally zero other motorbikes parked outside. And obviously it's like a massive hot springs with loads of springs or pools to get into. So many like picnic benches around that people can hire, terraces, bungalows. And we are literally the only people in here, <laughs> as usual. Are in there? Are you this one? But this one's more of a swimming pool then. Pretty cool. And absolutely bloody massive there's loads of little pools to get into i can feel the heat at the hot spring like when you step down it's like uh how would you describe it it smell it smells like a greenhouse <laughs> do you know what i mean like feels like a greenhouse no no it smells like it with all the plants around it and ah. then you can feel the heat coming up at my feet that's interesting oh it's not hot it's literally not hot oh is it not no i've been in warmer swimming pools uh, I mean, it's not, it's not cold. It's bloody deep though. I can't stand up. It does say six foot. Oh, well, I should be able to stand up in it then. <laughs> <laughs> Must be seven foot. <laughs> oh yeah, it is six foot, look. I'm just over it. Yeah, good. This is like the third hot spring we've been to in the Philippines. And I actually love these hot springs. They're less dangerous than the waterfall. 
So I always think I'm going to drown in a waterfall or get bitten by a snake. And then more exciting than a swimming pool, because a swimming pool is a swimming pool. Isn't that right, Abs? Yeah. Exactly. And these are the perfect medium. So yeah, I like hot springs. These hot springs sit at the foot of the active volcano Mount Hibok Hibok, which is where the thermal water is derived from. The water temperature is around 40 degrees, which is slightly cooled on the way down to the lower pools. Oh. Hello. Oh, they hate me. Finally, on to my favourite stop of the day. Comment below if you know what it is. Next is this beautiful lunch spot called Guerra Restaurant. It's highly rated on TripAdvisor, so the food must be good. But to add to that, it's surrounded by stunning rice fields and backs onto the main public beach, which is where we got our boat to White Beach earlier. Hi, Mom. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're obviously in an absolutely stunning setting with rice fields behind us but here we're in like a beautiful garden with some epic views out onto the sea watching a little boat drive past now there's some people swimming in the water and the sand to the beach here is actually like brown so I'm guessing because it's a volcanic island that's what's making the sand brown here and then white island is white island because it's got white sand on it clever but yes this this restaurant is really nice it does like a mixture of like Indian fusion Indonesian and Filipino but it's been quite difficult for me to eat here because there's language barriers slightly more here than any other island and obviously being allergic to soy sauce etc it's been quite hard to communicate so this is a good shout so one of the best things about Asia in general is mango shakes and you get one literally once a day. I've got a dal soup and then I ordered rice but probably didn't need it. It looks very nice. So. And I got a beef render. The next stop is Katy Bowerson Falls. How much do we pay Gaz? 150 pesos for two people that is, there's an environmental fee and a few other fees. What's interesting is when we arrived on this island we had to fill out like an online form which gave us a QR code. They've only asked for it here but they scan it everywhere and I was saying to Gaz yeah. like if Eva feels like an overhang from Covid like still that kind of thing but they asked they asked no questions on that situation when you filled it out. The, the, the guy who owns the hotel I've heard him moaning to his mate at the bar saying he thinks it puts people off coming to the island. What because of it? Because it's like essentially you need to fill in all of your details. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a bit odd to be honest, but I don't know whether if, it, if there was a natural disaster, that's how they keep track of you as well. Because obviously it's a volcanic. Who knows? But bit it's big interesting. Big brother, isn't it? Bit big brother, yeah. yeah. Anyway, we're walking up to the waterfall now, so let's see what it's like. Whoa! She's a she's a stunner. Look at that. We keep saying we've seen so many waterfalls, but everyone is literally different. And I would definitely say this is the highest one that we've seen so far in the Philippines, isn't it? Yeah, Look for sure. At, it must be, what, 50 metres high? No, it's, so I read online, it's 250 metres high, Gaz. That's not 250 metres, could be feet, maybe. Okay, I didn't read that online, let me check what I read online, but yeah, absolutely unreal. Whoa. I've just checked my online article and it does say 250 metres, so I was right, and it is absolutely huge and almost kind of scary looking because of its height and the way that it's like crowded amongst the forest like so high the cliff and then loads of trees around it which are also really high so just feel very like almost trapped here but it's cool Okay, so there's loads of stuff you can do on Comagan Island. There's the sunken cemetery, you can hike up the volcano, but apparently that takes hours, but I reckon the views would be epic. 
there's diving, there's snorkeling, there is so much more than what yeah, we've done today. But unfortunately we have only got one day of proper exploring as we've got some really cool stuff planned in our next location that we've got booked but we're glad that we've managed to squeeze this island in because it has definitely been a vibe. Beautiful I'd say, absolutely stunning yeah, isn't it? It's for sure. Really good but anyway make sure you hit the subscribe button, give us a thumbs up and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!